right, let's try it. Most, uh, or most of, I, I have insomnia. Very bad. And uh, insomnia, some people think they have insomnia. Sometimes I don't fall asleep till like <laughs> one in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, have, I'll have like a whole tea. And I still won't fall asleep. <laughs> and so, <laughs> at one in the morning, I am laying in bed trying to envision crashing waves onto the shore of my slumber is what I've read somewhere and I've locked onto it although it never works because <clears throat> in these crashing waves I'll think of it and I'll think of it and the further I try to push any kind of interesting thought out of my head the fur it's right there on the shore with these crashing waves and it comes sailing in like a giant pirate ship and it just beaches right in front of me at about two in the morning and it says, hey, Kyle, do you think you could barbecue over a volcano? <laughs> and what are you going to, what are you going to go to sleep? I don't know. Let me check with that in the morning. I'll look it up on Wikipedia. Fuck no, you lay there going, that's a good goddamn question. <laughs> and you sit there and you start milling it over. Well, I mean, I guess there's possibilities. You know, I guess if you had some kind of flame retardant suit, but maybe one of those things that they use to collect the money at church, those collection baskets, you can get close enough to the mouth of the volcano and maybe dip it over the edge long enough to cook it from the heat of the lava and you, you realize quickly that this is a stupid idea. There's nothing that's going to get you within 15 feet of a fucking volcano. You're a goddamn idiot. You get up and you get your graph paper and you figure this out properly like the midnight scientist that you are. And so you start thinking, well, given the proper funding or grant, maybe we can get a helicopter that's going to hover over the mouth of the volcano with some sort of meat cradle that it suspends over it. But that's preposterous, because not only are the noxious fumes going to affect the pilot of the, vo of, the, of the helicopter, the gases alone are affecting the density of the air, giving that helicopter an uneven elevation and you an uneven cooking time in that meat cradle. Scratch that bullshit. <laughs> so you him and hawing pace around till about maybe 4.30, 5 o'clock when you go, by golly, I think I cracked this bitch. And you realize that you're going to have to set up a series of cannons that could effectively shoot the meat over the volcano into some reciprocating netting. And don't think for one minute that I haven't realized that you're going to have to put the proper striations in the barrel of these cannons because you're going to want to rotisserate that meat when it goes over the volcano. You shoot that flat out, you're cooking one half of it, you're wasting your whole day. Not to mention getting your calculus on and judging the distance that they're going to shoot over the mouth of the volcano, plus the gunpowder is going to cook it a little bit on its own in the cannon. So that's a measurement in that fax. <laughs> and don't think I didn't remember that you're not going to want to do this with wings or ribs because that's just going to blow apart when you shoot it out and you're going to be spending your whole day picking meat out of the tree line instead of proving your theory correct. Get yourself a ham or a turkey, something that's going to hold itself together. <laughs> right when you realize that this, this might work, it's about 6.30 in the morning, and you realize, well, now is the best time than ever be the first call into the National Park Service <laughs> and propose this idea slash picnic. <laughs> it's time to go to work and you haven't slept again. That's what insomnia is. <laughs> um, and it's been an awesome show and I love these guys. <laughs>